Has your doctor recommended that you have an MRI scan to try and work out your probability of having prostate cancer? Or have you already had an MRI scan and you're looking at the report trying to decipher what all the technical jargon actually means? If this is you, then this video may provide you benefit. Hi, for those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located on the Gold Coast in Australia. In the following video, I wanted to unpack for you what an MRI report tells us in terms of your probability of having prostate cancer. And more specifically, there is a system called the PIRAD system, which grades MRIs and lets us know if we think someone is a low probability of having an abnormal growth or whether or not we think that risk is higher. As always, if you get benefit, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Actually, 90% of people that watch our content don't currently sus subscribe. And if you don't subscribe to the channel, the probability that YouTube show you another video is pretty low. It does us a huge help. So if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's get into it. The way that we screen for prostate cancer has evolved enormously over the last 30 years. Historically, all we had was a PSA blood test in combination with the examination, the physical examination of the prostate. And on the basis of that, we made a determination if someone actually needed to proceed on with the next step, which historically used to be a transrectal prostate biopsy. Now there's been a huge evolution in that process now, whereby if we feel that there are abnormalities of either the examination and the PSA test, then the next step is to perform an MRI. An MRI basically is a specialized form of imaging that allows us to get a picture inside your prostate, and it's on the basis of those images that we can determine the probability or the risk that someone has prostate cancer. Now, it's important to note that an MRI scan in and of itself is not diagnostic. We, we look at a series of criteria to work out probability, and then there's a discussion between the treating doctor and the patient about the next step. So one of the advantages to an MRI scan is not only is it very detailed and we get a great picture inside the prostate, but there's actually no radiation exposure to get that image. An MRI basically is a big magnet and it's a big donut in effect and men go into the donut feet first up to around uh, mid chest and it can take 30 to 40 minutes for us to get that picture but the picture depending on where it's done is, is pretty reliable in terms of assessing risk. Okay, now one of the challenges that we have had is historically is that one radiologist might think something looks okay and that might be very different to what another radiologist actually thinks. And so there was the evolution, if you like, of standardized reporting so that we might uh, be able to, across centers and across radiologists, be talking about the same thing. The way that an MRI scan is reported or graded is with a PIRAD score. Now, PIRAD stands for Prostate Imaging Reporting and Data System. Now, on the basis of this score, which ranges from one through to five, we get probability of cancer being present. So, a PIRAD one, well, that's at the bottom end of the scale, but basically is plumb normal. The scan looks entirely normal. There is nothing suspicious that can be seen. A PIRAD two means that things are not 100% normal, but usually what this refers to is either scarring or inflammatory features or inflammatory change somewhere in the peripheral zone. I should make a point at this time that Within the prostate, there are two key areas that you need to be aware of. One is called the transition zone, which is the central part of the prostate. That's the part of the prostate that basically gets bigger as we get older, the part that is prone to BPH, and it's that enlargement in the prostate that causes urinary symptoms. The outer part of the prostate is called the peripheral zone, and that's where the majority of cancers arise from. That really underpins why it can be so challenging in diagnosing prostate cancer because 
cancer does not cause symptoms until it's very large and locally progressed. If someone has got a PIRAD1, the probability that they have occult prostate cancer, cancer that we cannot see, is around 10%. If someone has a PIRAD2, then crudely speaking, it's around 20%. Now the PIRAD3 is the gray area in the middle. We can see a, a spot usually in the peripheral zone. The characteristics of it are not entirely consistent with a prostate cancer, but something just isn't quite right. And so the PIRAD3s are our gray area as it were. The majority of people with a PIRAD3 will actually have benign disease only. It's around 70%. 30% of individuals can actually have prostate cancer. Now it's the fours and the fives, the PIRAD fours and fives that correlate more strongly with a prostate cancer diagnosis. So with a four, the probability is around 75%. And if someone has a PIRAD five, the probability is around 95%. So as you can see on that scale of one through to five, as we head northwards on that scale, the probability that we have a prostate cancer diagnosis is greater, but it's important to be aware that this is not absolute. Now, on the MRI scan, you may see, or in the report, you may see different terms, and there are different uh, characteristics that we look at on an MRI scan. Number one is called the T2 axial T2 weighted image, which basically is what gives us our mud map. That's the anatomy. We then have diffusion weighted imaging and, and DWI or diffusion weighted imaging basically is looking at density inside the prostate. The more dense, the less fluid it has within a particular area and the more concerning it is for a prostate cancer. The final characteristics is the DCE, which is dynamic contrast enhancement. That's at the end of the study where men have an injection of gadolinium, which is a specialized dye in essence, and men have an injection and we're looking to see if there is any early asymmetric enhancement of a particular area. Now the greater, crudely speaking, the greater the number of characteristics, abnormal characteristics that are seen, we head further up the pyrad scale. But it, the nuance is that it will depend very much on where that area is in relationship to, is it in the peripheral zone or is it in the transition zone? Okay, now more importantly, how do we manage men with different PIRAD scores? In essence, if you've got a PIRAD 1 or a 2, these men are uh, surveyed. And in my practice at the prostate clinic, these men then have a repeat PSA at around six months time. At six months, if the PSA goes down and we then have correlation between the MRI and the PSA, those men can be surveyed on an annual basis. If, however, that man has a further increase in his PSA at six months, the next step would be further imaging with a PSMA PET scan to try to make sure that that man is not one of the false negatives and that man doesn't have occult prostate cancer that couldn't be seen on the MRI. Now, if someone has a four or a five, so if we see a significant lesion, well, that man, in almost all cases, will proceed on with a targeted biopsy of that area so that we can get the characteristics of what that spot is. Number one, is it actually prostate cancer? And if it is, what is the Gleason score? I should say at this point, if you've had an MRI, if you've got a comment, a question, or you'd like to share your story, please leave it in the comment section down below. Now the interesting aspect or the area that is ambiguous is the management of people with PIRAD3. As I said, this is a kind of, this is a, a, a gray area. This is an ambiguous area. Things don't look plumb normal and they don't look very abnormal. And depending on the experience of the radiologist and the number of scans that are done at a particular center, you can see that the number of people that are called a PIRAD3 is greater. So the experience of the radiologist is such that they don't have that confidence to call something either a two or a four. So the way that we manage PIRAD threes depends very much on that individual man's specific situation. What's his family history? What is his PSA? What are his PSA kinetics? What's the PSA density? 
and on the examination, is there any abnormality in the same area that we're seeing the PIRAD3 on the MRI? Now, all of that needs to be amalgamated and discussed with the man so that he can make a decision that is best for him. The options that we have with PIRAD3, a period of surveillance, the possibility of a PET scan, or alternatively, proceeding on with a biopsy. The final decision will depend very much on the discussion that you have with your treating urologist. Some common uh, misconceptions that I just wanna highlight at the end here. If you've got a PIRAD four or five, it does not mean you have a diagnosis of prostate cancer. It means that there are areas of suspicion that we can see on your scan that need to be further evaluated, but it is not in and of itself diagnostic. And just because you've got a PIRAD 1 or a 2 doesn't mean that there's a guarantee that there is nothing abnormal in your prostate. It means that there's nothing that we can see on the MRI, but you should still undergo surveillance to make sure that your PSA tracking is concordant or in agreement with what we're seeing on your MRI. If you got benefit, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to know more about prostate issues, have a look at this video or alternatively this video here. If you'd like to join us, we have a live event on the last Thursday of every month at 7.30 p.m. GMT plus 10, which is Brisbane time. Join the channel, become a member, ask your question, and we will have a discussion with regards your particular question at that time. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.